Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more EU4. This is the start of a new campaign where we are going to play as Castile and get the achievement called... Toward the bottom of the list, it is called the Five Colonies. So, basically we have just a few more weeks until the Wealth of Nations DLC comes out for EU4. And I want to do another achievement. And I think we're going to start off as Castile. And the goal is going to be just to have five colonial nations. I never really did a, uh, a full-on colonialization type playthrough in this expansion. And I feel like it's something that we should do. Now, I've played Portugal twice in the past. I've also played as England and Austria, but we've actually never played as Castile. So we're going to pick Castile, um, and we're going to try to beat the world to the colonization game, and then try to get five colonies and get that achievement. So we do need to play in Iron Man mode to get the achievement. Iron Man mode does lock the settings, so bonuses will be on... Um, you have to have historical lucky nations. I'm not going to change AI difficulty to high, because in the past when I've done that, all that it does is just make the AI like unrealistically aggressive towards you. Like you conquer one province and then they join a coalition. It's completely unrealistic. Like any other country could do what you did, no problem. It's it's artificial difficulty, I don't like it. Even, well, lo unlucky nations is kind of artificial, but it is what it is. So as Castile, we start off with a fairly poor com uh, leader. He's a 1-1-2. And of course, as a Western nation, we um, do get level three tech across the board. So we'll just call this uh, the five colonies. And let's start our Iron Man playthrough. Now, historically, Portugal is our friend. Aragon usually ends up being our rival. There are some pretty interesting events that can happen as Castile that can unite Aragon. You can either decide to conquer Aragon militarily, or you can try to do it diplomatically by forming it with a like a royal marriage. Uh, there's an event that can cause these two to form a personal union. So like, if your character is male and Aragon gets ruled by a female, then that can happen. Um, we'll see if that happens. I'm not really too worried about Aragon. I'm more concerned about the colonization type thing. So, we'll find interesting ways to entertain ourselves while we are doing the colonization thing. Probably going to be playing on speed 4 or 5 for most of the playthrough because uh, colonization can take quite a while. Now, historically, Portugal is supposed to be our friend, like I mentioned. However, we don't really care. Uh, we're going to attack Portugal and get them small enough that we can vassalize them so that their colonies become our colonies. And it's going to be great. So they start off friendly, because we have the historical friend thing. They're going to want a royal marriage right away. Uh, we're not going to do that, though. We're going to immediately start fabricating a claim on Porto. I'm pretty sure Porto is the one that I want. Yeah, it's got the estuary. So of the provinces that we are allowed to go for, Porto is the only one with an estuary within the Sevilla, Sevilla node. So yes, fabricate claim on Porto, please. Go for that right away. And of course, playing on Iron Man mode means that we get tons of pop-ups. How glorious. Now we do start off with a, uh, a truce with Granada, so we can't immediately reconquer our cores down there, but we will soon. In uh, about four years, we can we can attack Granada. So we're going to head our army up this way, and we're going to get ready to declare war on them pretty much the second we're able to. And, um, yeah. So let's start off on speed like two or three while we just get things going. And then once we get there, we'll, we'll be there. Navarro wants an alliance. Now, Navarro is usually threatened by... Castile in the beginning of the game, and they are. So all we really need to do is just improve relations with them, and then they will accept a peaceful vassalization. Navarra as a country doesn't really have any extra cores, so they're just a single one province miner. But what else are we really going to spend the relationship on down here? We don't really care too much for the war between England and France. We have nothing to do with the Holy Roman Empire. Our main enemies are Morocco and, you know, some Muslims over the water. It, it makes sense, I think, to just annex Navarra. So we will accept an alliance from them. Um, I should have actually checked my missions because sometimes the the mission can be to, to do the alliance. Uh, we'll do the royal marriage then. Get some extra free points. And then we'll start to um, do a some improved relations there. One of our next missions is good relations with Portugal. Mm, we might be able to do that, but I don't want to do the royal marriage, so nah. Improve our prestige sounds fun. We're probably going to end up at war soon, so we'll leave it for now and see if anything interesting, more more valuable comes up. We have suffered some attrition in our own territory for reasons. We start off the game with Alvaro de Luna, a 2-2-3. Not bad. Not a bad guy. 
Oh, right, and we have uh, peoples that we should probably have protecting trade in our capital node. Now, this is a fantastic play, a uh, uh, fantastic country to play as if you want to be a trade power, naturally. I mean, Portugal and Castile are both colonizers and trade power people. But the Sevilla node is an end node. So money comes in from Western Europe, comes in from Genoa, comes in from this you know, African area, but it can't go out, just like the Venice node and the Antwerpen node. So those are the three end nodes that are in the game. And that is good. That is good for us. Money cannot leave. Once it's here, it's ours. So yes, we just want to protect trade there. We do already have um, a fair bit of trade power. I'm assuming we'll have more than, more than Portugal once we get our, our boats working. Portugal doesn't have their boats, and they're actually almost as high as we are. An alliance from Portugal? No. Nope, I'm going to have to say no. Sorry. Our force limit is not built up to in either case. So I think we'll add some extra light ships to start. We do want to have naval supremacy. Um, I don't believe Portugal has a lot of ships. A lot of heavies. They have six. We have five. All right. Well, maybe we do want to... All right. We're going to start off going for naval supremacy then. Let's cancel these, these light ships. And we'll start off with just heavy ships because we're going to blow up Portugal's fleet. That'll be the easier way to get naval control of this node. An alliance from England. Well, let's see. The problem with accepting an alliance from England is that if we do that, then when we declare war on Portugal, it'll just get broken. So it doesn't really benefit us in much of a way. I think we just decline. I'm going to stay out of the Western Europe affairs, focus on colonization. Getting our colonies going. Alright, I think we're ready for speed four. We are gaining inflation because we do have a gold mine. And we're losing these things. England started off as a Curia controller. Look at this. The votes are so sparse. So we want to try to wrap up the war with Portugal before uh, 1448 so that we can have our army available for Granada. We also hope that Granada doesn't form any pesky alliances. Now... Portugal is allied with Aragon, so we're going to end up at war with them as well. It will be interesting to see if we could get somebody else on our side. Perhaps we ally France so that France, once they're done with the 100 years war, can take care of the armies of Aragon. I think we do that. I'd rather be allied with France than England because I expect France will win. What are our missions? Yep, yeah, okay. Let's go for the alliance with France. We should still have plenty of relationship slots available. We can also make sure that France becomes our friend by doing things like rivaling um, England. England's not really a, a real threat to us, but I do want France to be my friend. And right now they're already winning their war. We can't offer to join. However, if England does get a leg up, we can just enforce peace. Which is, it's very unlikely. Good thing about being allies, though, is we can watch the Hundred Years' War while we wait. We've gained the trade dispute CB against Aragon there, threatening our trade. So Aragon has just embargoed us. And Aragon starts off with no heavy ships. They only have galleys. So it would be pretty easy for us to go blow up their, their army. Or, sorry, their fleet. And they also have fewer troops than we do. Aragon. How do you spell Aragon? There we go. I have 17 regiments. We have more than that. How long until our claim comes? Only 27%, so we're a long ways away. Well, since you are allied with Portugal, if we declared war on Aragon over the trade dispute, we would end up at war with Portugal. By the time that war ends, or by the, by the time we are sieging things, we would probably have the claim on Porto. But then, since it's not the war goal, we would take a penalty. On the other hand, we could use this to get trade power from both of these guys. Most of the Aragon land, though, is in Genoa. Where did our merchants end up? We have one in the capital and one in Bordeaux. We're collecting from trade here. Huh. For some reason, the game thinks 
thinks that that is the best way to spend our merchant. I would say we'd probably be better off steering trade over on this side. We have very little trade power, but if we did do the war with Aragon, then we could have quite a bit. Hmm. See, I was kind of hoping that we could get um, get a war with Portugal and have Aragon not be involved. But if we were to declare war, I don't think France would join yet. Yeah, they're too occupied. Worst case scenario, we just hold off until we can reconquer Granada. Get some extra nice good land down here. It's already been converted to the Muslim faith, but it'll be pretty easy for us to convert back. There's our mission for it, too. Finish the Reconquista. So we'll take that right before we declare war. We do have spare advisors. Um, we could pick up some guys. I would not go past level 1 at this point, though. Not really liking the selection very much. Morale of armies is pretty good. Alright, let's hire some guys. Just the basics, level 1. Where are my heavies? 61% and our claim on Portugal. I think it's better to just declare war on them over the county, the province there. See, my goal is to, over the next, say, 15 to 20 years, whittle Portugal down to a small enough size that we can, we can vassalize them. And to do that, we just need to get started right away. Forward to glory. 30 admin points and 46 ducats for increased morale. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Aragon gains a claim on our territory. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> it's kind of annoying that France won't join. They are winning their war. And we've gained our conquest CB versus Portugal. So now, if we were to declare war on England, what we could ex or sorry, declare war on Portugal, what we could expect is that both England and Aragon would honor the alliance. Um, France, I'm assuming, won't join this war. Yep. I don't really think we can actually take both of them at the same time right now, without France's help. Because Portugal is going to have roughly the same number of troops that we do. A little bit less. These, these heavies are going to be quite expensive, too, to maintain. And I think we can afford to, to scale back our, our maintenance for at least a little bit. It's going to be a few more months. They appear to have about 15 regiments and about 11 over here. And we've got 21. Maybe. We, we If this battle goes poorly, then I have a feeling that Aragon would cause some serious problems for us. Plus, their commander is a 4-3-4-1, which is scary. Let's go see what this army in, in this province here has for a commander. A 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Yeah, that's a bit scary. I don't think that we really want to do that. Our heir is a 0, zero, zero so I think what we do want to do <laughs> is make him into a general in the hopes that he dies, because I do not want to play as a 0, zero, zero. And we're going to put him in charge of an army because it basically this doubles the chances that your character dies. Even if he's not leading combat, just being in charge of an army increases the likelihood that he could die. In fact, even just being a general increases the chance you can die. So, solidify papal relations. Yeah, that sounds like something we should do. Portugal just declared war upon their new enemy, Morocco. Interesting. Let's go work on the papal state's opinion. And let's end, uh, take a look at this. So Portugal is declared war with Morocco. We don't really like Morocco, but I'd kind of like to possibly <laughs> Granada dishonored their alliance. There's a chance that we could use this to our advantage. Um, 
It used to be that I, I thought the enforced peace thing was like useless because you could never use it. But you can always send subsidies to any country. And if you're sending any amount of money, it will give you bonus opinion very quickly. So if we just send money to Morocco for a few months, we could make them like us enough that we could enforce peace on Portugal. That's the key. you got to use war subsidies and enforce peace together. Individually, they don't really do much. But I'm just trying to find that way that we can declare war on, in on Portugal. The only problem is that by doing that, we, we would be a secondary partner in the war, which would prevent us from taking anything directly, unless Morocco felt like giving us land. But maybe we wait. Maybe we just wait for Portugal to... Ooh, my king, while their new king is too young, a regent will rule Portugal. Yes, perhaps now is the time to strike indeed. So apparently they, uh, their guy just died and they have a regency council for, two, for one year. Interesting. Let's wait and see what they do, if they actually ferry their troops across into Ceuta. If they do that and they leave the homeland abandoned, then we'll just declare war on them. And we'll fight. We'll fight Aragon's 4-3. And the other thing that could change between now and then is that the Hundred Years' War might end. We have our alliance. Apparently we're a competing great power. Let's royal marriage them just to kind of solidify this relationship. Alright, cool. Well, I'm going to take a break here. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, if you like the series, do click the like button. That helps out quite a bit with YouTube search rankings and that kind of thing. Um, and, and I definitely look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.